The Iron Man Defense Pier. At first glance, it doesn't look like anything special, but what I've made it to be, I believe, is the rarest and most unique account I've seen in this game. But we're gonna keep taking it a step further and perfect this account to its maximum capability. So far, we've done a lot of things that made this account unique, such as being the only one per Iron Man with permanent access to Mortania, therefore getting the first one per account with Barrows KC, as well as Theater of Blood KC, and in turn, awarding us two pieces of just this year at only 45 combat. There's only one last piece of Theater of Blood equipment I'll be going for, and that is the just this year face guard. Today though, I don't think I'll take on that task, as I kind of want to break from Theater of Blood as I've been there for months. As well, we could be looking at a possible pet there someday, but who knows, that's not going to be likely anytime soon. Throughout this journey, we've discovered many new methods in order to acquire some gear that no other accounts have, and it makes this account super unique because a lot of the gear that this account has is discontinued and impossible to get on an account build such as this. We've also looked towards improving our other skills and getting them relatively high, also taking down some near impossible combat achievements, which once again, I think I'll be focusing on some of that today. This account has a spectacular grind ahead of it, but even looking towards the past has already became one of the most unique accounts and that was the whole goal and intention of this series. So let's continue on and think of new ways to innovate and create inside of this very unique account build. Therefore, I welcome you to episode number 16 of Defense Saga. But first, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor. If you're a gamer or even a content creator like me, you'll know throughout the day you're extremely busy and you're often preoccupied with your work on the computer. Well, I find myself from time to time in the past going to the freezer, getting some ultra-processed food, throwing it in the microwave, and then eating it throughout the day. Just a very unhealthy lifestyle. And since then, I've found control. I've switched my diet to control throughout the day before my normal and healthier dinners in order to just sustain the calories I need throughout the day, as well as get my daily nutrients such as fiber, protein, and even collagen in some of their products. Their protein cookies have 22 vitamins and minerals, 4 grams of fiber, 4 grams of collagen, 15 grams of protein, and they're only 250 calories. Also, their protein meal bars are 15 grams of protein and only 280 calories. What surprises me the most isn't the nutritional benefit from these products, but it is the taste. I've been using these as meal supplements daily throughout the week while working, and I've actually lost upwards of 10 pounds in the last month. They've really helped me get back on track with my nutrition, and they've allowed me to extend that offer to you by sponsoring this video. If you want to make a healthier change, please go to drinkctrl.com forward slash Rendy and use code Rendy to get 10% off your first order. So in the last episode, I took on a lot of combat achievements in Theater of Blood with the help of Iron Gear Discord and a lot of their members. Unfortunately though, we were just a bit shy from hitting that threshold of getting enough for the hard tier combat achievements, which I can get more pest control points from, more hard clues from, as well as get an unlimited transport to Trollheim daily, which I'm going to be using in the future for something top secret. I'm also stacking up my AFK methods on this account. Taxi games and soul wars are great for maxing out my defense and hit points, which I'm going to do soon, as well as choppy mahoganies are great, which I'm going to max out my woodcutting soon, as well just get enough mahogany logs to turn into planks for 99 construction and i believe that will happen somewhat soon as well but what happens when i run out of those two afk activities and i max them out well i'm going to be looking towards mining and star mining in my afk time while i edit other projects and work on other things outside of this account build so i want to stack up my afk potential as much as possible right now while i have the time for it and this would include possibly getting a dragon pickaxe for the best mining xp at those stars as well as getting some prospector gear so i can actually knock out two birds with one stone here because if i go for Chaos Ellie combat achievements, I'll be getting more combat achievement points, which will put me much closer to the hard combat achievement tier. As well, Chaos Elemental has a very high drop rate of the Dragon Pickaxe, so maybe I'll get lucky and get that off the fly, and I'll have to do other methods that will involve a lot more time or a lot more chaos. But what I found out soon after going after Chaos Ellie kills and attempting the combat achievements, just a few of them inside of the Chaos Ellie bracket, is that this boss is insanely difficult to kill on an account like mine. This is literally regen from my first poison all the way back up to full HP before managing to get another hit off on it. I don't know if I can even do this. On any other account, Chaos Elemental is like a beginner boss, but on my account with one attack, one strength, it's almost impossible to hit on this thing because its defense is so high, its HP is so high, and even its defensive bonuses are high. As well, it has a normal HP regeneration rate, which kind of works against my favor because if I use an alt account to de-warhammer spec its defense down, even if this alt is brewed down to one strength, I still hit fours with de-warhammer spec and maximum crush gear, so I'm going to have to wait four minutes per de-warhammer spec to go back up to its max hit points because it's required 
required to get an Iron Man kill credit that the NPC is totally refreshed in HP before attempting to attack it and kill it. And I'm still going to be having to hit around 180 defense with my one attack and one strength, so I'll likely need to hit this with a Dragon Warhammer multiple times and then wait even longer for its HP to go back up. As well, I'm also going to have to somehow poison this boss over three times in a row, sometimes upwards of six times depending on how much HP it regenerates, in order to kill it because its HP level is so massive. I found out the hard way through the flinch combat task that it's literally impossible to re-poison it this many times on average unless I have insane luck and spend over 20 hours here to complete that task without Dragon Warhammer specs on it all beforehand. So even if I lowered his defense with a D Warhammer and waited like 30 minutes for its HP to regen to full, it would then already be back at at least 30 defense and then I'd be stabbing it, hoping to hit a 1, poison it, then have to wait for the poison to roll down and then his defense would be back up to like 80 at that point and I'd have to get the second poison off at around 80 defense and then whenever I get to the third poison, I'd have to get the third third poison off at over 100 defense. So this boss is extremely annoying and its defense and HP and natural HP regen timer of the old school one per minute is really something to overcome. I mean, I personally thought this boss going into it was going to be piss easy, but boy was I wrong. This made me decide throughout these kills that I was not going to be taking on the kill count combat achievement task for this boss. It was just too insane. It takes me over an hour to kill this boss with several different tests of different methods I would use. The only one that would probably take less time is once again pulling up 30 of my friends to help me with retribution alts, which is not going to be so feasible. And even then I found out if the Chaos Ellie even focuses another person and the last attack person that takes damage isn't yourself, well, you don't get the drop. And I found this out the hard way after killing Chaos Ellie once, not getting the drop, killing it again, not getting the drop because I thought it was something else. And I spent over three hours killing Chaos Ellie without a singular drop or kill count accredited to my Iron Man. Well, we just spent about an hour and a half here and we didn't even get a drop. I thought the red cross didn't mean anything because it hasn't passed on Rex. After another hour and finally killing this thing, I actually got none of my tasks done. Because the account that lured the Chaos Ellie by the tree where I could flinch it actually had some of its items unequipped before it was reset back to full HP even. So this means the Chaos Ellie remembers even after resetting its entire stat base that it did remove someone's gear. So if you're just wandering around in the wilderness at some point and you decide to take on this task and kill Chaos Ellie, well maybe three hours ago it removed some random's gear who went past you and then you just wouldn't get that combat task even though you're the one it never removed the gear from. I would need to kill the Chaos Alley on a new world to refresh the entire NPC. I made sure it didn't remove my gear, de warhammered it down for like a half hour to 45 minutes, then spent over another hour on my defense account, stabbing it, flinching it as its defense level went up, having to repoison it several times out here in the wilderness, and just hoping not a singular person ran by the Chaos Alley. Not only because one, it might remove this person's gear and end the task, but two, because if it actually hits a person other than myself last, it's not going to award me the boss kill count. Also, we're in the wilderness, so someone could just be me at any time during this two-hour session of one Chaos LA kill count. There has to be a better way to do this, but we did finally get the Hoarder task completed. Finally, both of those are completed. That took like six, seven hours of testing as well as actual kills. A lot of you might be saying at this point, why don't you just take Chaos Ellie to the commonly known safe spot where it sits exactly at its edge of aggression and gets stuck there and you can just aimlessly stab it and not have to worry about flinching, increasing your DPS and poison chance. Well, there was a problem with that spot. Because Chaos Ellie never aggresses you, one, it's not going to know it's your kill count. I mean, you could go in its aggression and take one hit and then count it towards your kill count, but then there's a secondary problem here. Poison nowadays doesn't work on retreating enemies and only transfers if an NPC attacks another person. As of about a year ago, if an NPC is retreating, poison just totally disappears on that NPC. Because the Chaos Ellie is technically retreating and never attacking back in this particular spot, poison never triggers on it. Trust me, I sat there for three hours trying to do this. I was looking into more methods because I still wanted that combat task of getting the 10 and 25 kill count of Chaos Ellie, but I did not want to spend 50 hours doing it. I found another guy who was selling a service where he sits there for 8 hours and right axes Chaos Ellie on its spawn, which made sense up until the point where I realized it doesn't move from that spawn. This confused me because I thought Chaos Ellie aggression would turn towards the other player and follow it because one player sitting in the middle of an NPC typically doesn't mean that NPC is going to be stuck. I found out this only works for some reason with 3x3 three three NPCs and by sitting in the exact middle of it and red axing this NPC. I don't know why this sticks a 3x3 NPC in place, even in a multi-combat area with multiple players luring this NPC around, but it for some reason only does it to the size of an NPC. 
I still have yet to see an explanation on that. Therefore, you could stand about 10 or 11 tiles out and use a longbow and hit Chaos Ellie where you could reach him, but he could not reach you. And this would be helpful for mains who are trying to AFK Chaos Ellie kills. But for me, I have to get up close and personal. So this thing is constantly whacking me and it's not really doing me any favors by having an account Red X here in the middle at the spawn of Chaos Ellie. But then I thought, what if I combine the two methods? I lure Chaos Ellie all the way to the safe spot where I don't even have to flinch and I can endlessly just poke it with a dagger trying to poison it. But then I also Red X the Chaos so it's aggressed to a person actually in its NPC zone when it gets poisoned therefore maybe the poison will trigger because it's not technically retreating instead it's just focusing another player which allows poison to transfer in those instances after hitting it over 20 times and spending over two hours constantly hitting it yet again even with another account red x and its body that it was aggressed to and it wasn't totally in retreat mode this did not seem to work unless i just got super unlucky poison was not triggering in the spot because he was never aggressing the account trying to deal it it seems like the npc would have to recognize aggression with the account that is actually attempting to poison it before transferring the poison to another account I don't know if I'm just getting really unlucky here or what. So after all of this, still no good method to kill Chaos Ellie, and it's definitely not worth the 10 and 25 kill count combat achievements, but I had one more plan up my sleeve to test. For my third kill count, I decided to do something disgusting, and that was something I've done in other areas of the game, but not exactly in this scenario, and not with this much food. I first died near the Chaos Ellie in a more safe area near some trees, and put my grave there. I then teleported with the Chronicle over 20 times in order to death dot more lobsters back to that remote grave in the wilderness, where I would have an hour to go through and eat all of these lobsters before they disappear off the ground. I then had over 450 lobsters death piled, which is near the max of 500 in a singular grave, put into that grave where I would be eating and recoiling, wasting a lot of lobsters as well as a lot of recoils I had saved, which took in itself to gather this many lobsters and recoils, probably over 100 hours, so I do not spin these things lightly. I went and took these 500 lobsters and attempted to kill it with recoils. This was successful, but it took around the same amount of time, about an hour, and there wasn't a 100% guarantee I would hit a 1 damage to get the real kill count. In fact, one of the attempts doing this, I never hit a 1, and I only hit zeros, and therefore the kill credit didn't even go to my account, and I wasted countless recoils and hundreds of lobsters. And now there are PKers here who just destroyed my Chaos Ellie kill. So technically this was the quickest method at around 1 kill per 1 hour as long as I had decent RNG to hit the 1 hit in a singular hour of combat, which like I said could not happen possibly and did not happen in one instance. But at 1 kill count per hour I don't think it's worth continuing on trying to complete the combat task for Chaos Ellie for 10 and 25 kills. I'm going to leave it at 3 kill count as well I'm definitely not going to be sitting here for an hour at a time trying to get a 1 in 200 ish drop chance at a dragon pickaxe so we're going to scrap chaos heli for now oh my god why am i on strength i could have just ruined my account if i didn't check that on my way to the ellie this was before i even started chaos heli it was my first attempt at doing it this way and i found out there was slightly a bug that caused this issue i was two tick wood cutting with a rainbow and switched to f2p and well it's unarmed in f2p and an event rpg is unarmed as well Okay, so we're putting a hold on the D pickaxe for now, but also I still need combat achievement points and we're getting closer and closer to the hard tier. We did get some from Chaos Ellie, so it was not a complete failure, but we didn't get all that we could. So instead, I'm going to go to a close cousin of the Chaos Ellie, the Chaos Fanatic, and see what I can do there. Once again, this guy has a huge defense level, a huge defense bonus, and a naturally regenerating HP bar, which is not going to be doing us any favors. The only thing that he does have going for him is that he is not immune to Venom. So I attempted a few times to actually take my Venom alt attack pierce here with one strength, and hit ones with daggers for a 50% chance while wielding the Serpentine Helmet to Venom this NPC, and then hope that between the 20 seconds of hitting the one and the Venom tick that his HP would go back up being about a 33% chance. Since randomly the first NPC's HP regen can be between 1 and 60 seconds after inflicting damage. Unfortunately, it seemed like a lot less than a 33% chance when I was trying it, and I failed multiple times at getting his HP back up before Venom ticked down, making this kill impossible on my Iron Man to credit the kill towards that account. Man, I really just can't hit a 1 on this before it dies. It takes so long to get a successful Venom HP regen on one of these as well. I don't think this is going to work. Now there were some times that I was able to get the attack off and then the Venom ticked down after his HP regenerated, even though it was rare, I had accounts on multiple worlds trying to attempt this. I even had accounts hit once, then had it regen and tried to hit another one before the 20 second clearance window, which was hard because he has a lot of defense and even my high attack accounts 
could not hit on him within those 20 seconds with a ruined dagger poisoned. In the rare instances after hours of attempting to hit during this timing and get everything right and the venom finally applying to the Chaos Fanatic, well then I had to hit a 1 on him before he died naturally to venom with his very high defense and my 1 attack and strength and even with a fast hitting weapon and a nice amount of food, this seemed to never happen. I could never get the 1 hit off, even super potted as well and therefore the venom was almost too fast for my account to handle. I resorted at some points to try and de Warhammer's defense down, then timed the venom with the ruined dagger but this just became obsessive and extremely hard to pull off and then there was still just a chance that I would be able to hit the chaos fanatic before he died to the venom after his entire health regeneration and defense was lowered spending sometimes hours getting to this point. Using this attack pure venom all was how I was planning on taking on the praying to the gods combat task which involved killing the Chaos Fanatic 10 times without drinking any potion which restores prayer or leaving the wilderness, as there was another way to kill the Chaos Fanatic, but it wasn't going to involve me standing there for over 10 kills in one singular trip. Instead, I would be looking at around 2 to 3 kills per trip maximum with this method, and that method was something we already looked into, but for the Chaos Elemental, this time for the Chaos Fanatic, working a little bit better because of his lower defense, and because he doesn't teleport you all around the map. So once again I would die in a southern spot behind one of these obstacles, and then remotely die around 20 times by banking at the farming guild with a farming cape, then heading to Dark Wizards near the Chronicle Teleport. And this would allow me to stack up around 500 lobsters in this spot. I would then bring a fat inventory of recoils, some super combats I had made along with an event RPG to try and hit the one with maximum DPS, as well as a couple free inventory spaces to pick up the lobsters and eat them, and then hide back behind the obstacle as needed. To initiate this, I also lured him to the specific spot, and best Besides the kill count tasks being 10 and 25 from the Chaos Fanatic, I was using this method to also get the combat achievement task, sorry what was that, which was killing the Chaos Fanatic without anyone being hit by his explosion attack by simply dodging and going back behind the obstacle whenever I saw this attack and hoping that the RNG with this attack was not going to hit my tile. It did once, but the next attempt it was fine, I got it, and we're going for at least 10 kill count here anyways for the combat achievement task, averaging about 2-3 to three kills per hour. Alright, I don't think I got damage this time. We should finish him off. This should be 2kc, and we should get the sorry, what was that? There it is. Okay, let's go for 10kc next, I guess. Now, I only ended up getting 10 kill count here because I got kind of fed up. 2 to 3 kills per hour still is not the best, and even though this was quicker, it was using a lot of my supplies, and I did not think it was worth it going for the 25 kill count, at least not at this time. Maybe in the future we'll come back here and finish off the Chaos Fanatic kills, but I'm sufficient with just the points from 2 out of the 4, similar to how we did 2 out of the 4 with Chaos Ellie. Oh my god, I just got an Odium Ward, less than 10kc right here. I'm going to have to complete this eventually. The other two NPCs are actually going to be relatively easy to kill in the future because they have a weakness to magic, being Scorpia and the Crazed Archaeologist. Luckily, I believe whenever they make the DFS change that passed the poll, it's going to roll against an NPC's magic and magic defense bonus, and because that's so low on these two NPCs, I believe in the future we can complete the Odium Ward. Now, the Malediction Ward, I don't know if that's ever going to happen unless I get super lucky here, because killing the Chaos Fanatic is going to honestly be the worst out of all these bosses. At this point, I was still some combat tasks short, and I still wanted a dragon pickaxe because I just want a dragon pickaxe, let's be honest. So I called upon my friend Blade and offered him an absurd amount of money to help me boost Callisto, and he said he would help me test this for free before I was to pay him anything. But once again, our test yielded failure, and unfortunately, Callisto is a beast in itself. Since they've updated Callisto, they've buffed his stats, given him 1000 HP, a lot more defense, a lot more offensive stats which destroy my account, as well as made him immune to venom, poison, recoils, retribution, and vengeance, basically immune to my account. There is one update that came out with the new Callisto that's awesome though, and it's sort of like Nex, in an Iron Man instance even with normal accounts, you'll always get a drop, it will just be fractional on how much dependent damage you do, which means I can eventually get these combat achievement tasks done, possibly if I do some damage, which is going to be hard because once again this NPC has been buffed and it has an insane amount of defense in every stat, except magic which might be able to be taken down with circles in the future and less than 10 accounts. By the way, if there's more than 10 accounts inside of here, only 10 will get the drop chance and the best 10 at that. So we have to do this with less than 10 accounts, including my own, in order for it to get a real KC and attribute that kill towards the combat task, which I won't worry about now, but maybe in the future, whenever they buff the DFS, there will be some cool, unique circle method I can use with nine other accounts and just one damage from my DFS. 
After a very long time, we finally found a team to take on a couple more Theater of Blood tasks. We found a lot of these to be impossible, as it turns out you need to be in the room even on the hard mode task for it to count. Originally we thought it didn't matter. We tried doing the bloat task where we all have to be separated, but I had to be in the room for that. We found this out later on because it didn't give a failed message in the chat, it just didn't give a message at all whether it was completed or failed, and only upon entering the room late would it give you a failed message because you entered the room late in these hard mode tasks. But I would have to be in the room for that and I would be a plus one carry, which makes it pretty much impossible. As well with harder mode one and two, I would have to be in the Soda's Egg room, as well as the Zarpus room, which makes that pretty much impossible. So we narrowed down the fact that a lot of these tasks I thought were possible are in fact not possible on my account. And there is just less than a handful left that I can complete. And these are only completable because whenever I stall inside the Verzik room, it in fact does count me inside of that room for combat tasks and when opening chests. The tasks left that I possibly can complete are Perfect Verzik, Perfect Theater, which would be extremely difficult to pull off, as well as Harder Mode 3 and Nilo Sniper. So we managed to complete Harder Mode 3 and Nilo Sniper thanks to this amazing team, honestly some of the best Tobbers in the game. There's only three tasks left in Tob, which I think I could take on, which is Perfect Theater, Perfect Verzik, and lastly one I didn't mention, Teamwork Makes the Dream Work in Hard Mode Tob. Alright, we're about to get 94 HP. I've been on and off at Soul Wars for a long time. Usually, once again, only while I'm editing videos or working on another project entirely do I do the AFK Soul Wars Taxi games. But here we are, another HP level closer to 99. I've also started at Motherload Mine. I do want the full Prospector outfit. Eventually, though, I do want the Gym Bag, the Ore Bag, and the Top Level Access as well. It's going to be a lot of gold nuggets here, but to start, we have 37, so I'll buy one piece of Prospector as that's all I can afford. These are way slower than I thought they would be, and it's going to take me a lot of time just doing some slightly AFK skilling. Not even AFK enough to edit a video, but AFK enough to be annoying here. So I can't wait till we can eventually star mine in full Prospector though, it'll be a blessing. I've decided to head towards Volcanic Mine and just see if I can get lucky. I wanted to see if I can get the 1 in 100 chance at getting the Dragon Pickaxe from the Ore Packs. Cause then I can avoid, you know, doing some PVM for a while and hopefully not have to touch any of these insane bossing methods for just at least a little bit. I need a break from this. So we're going to Volcanic Mine. I've heard you can tick eat the balls from Volcanic Mine. Damage is calculated though when the ball hits you, kind of like Soda's Egg in TOB. It's got a very similar animation effect to it in fact, but you have to tick eat it at the last possible tick. So I'm going to bring some onions, not eat as much food, and see how possible that is. Well, the guide I was watching failed to mention that there's literally falling sky damage as well as other forms of damage, it seems, in this mini game, And I'm not just going to be able to rely solely on onions to tick eat everything from here other than just the NPC's attack. It's probably just more worth it to just pull out my lobsters and tank things. I do have high defense and high HP, luckily. Even though this account is one prayer and it can't protect from range like most people in Volcanic Mine, you know, at least I have those two stats going for me. So we're going for the solo point method of just kind of leaving really quickly after about two minutes of being inside of there and just utilizing as much as we can. So I'm not going for XP. I'm getting still 50k XP per hour though, even though that's a drastic difference from like 80 to 100k XP per hour. I'm still getting a fair amount of XP for level 67 mining. I'm going for this higher reward point for more ore packs, obviously, because my main goal here is a dragon pickaxe. But I've realized there's collection log slots here as well besides the pickaxe, such as this volcanic mine teleport, the large water canister, which I'll never need using the short method as well as this fertilized soil spell which I can never use because I can never get lunars so I'm going to literally unlock these things just for the collection log slots even though I can never use them and dedicate hours of my time in doing so don't ask me why it's because I'm a psycho okay also I found I'm having to wear graceful and waste a lot of food and staminas doing this method here because once again we don't have overhead prayers and this is the quick method of me running around the volcanic mine and running out it's a lot of staminas i don't really like wasting staminas so even though i have literally over 1000 of these i'm going to think of something else here so I'm now in full just this year, well at least except for the helm because we don't have that yet, and I'm running through the volcanic mine. I'm using a sickle along with my just this year because it's the best in slot range defense bonus, and I'm the only defense peer with a sickle by the way, wink wink. So we're going to utilize everything we can inside of here. And unfortunately I tried to NPC examine this monster, it did not let me on my alt. I couldn't tell if it's using a ranged attack, but based on deductive reasoning here I've worn all different kinds of equipment for mitigating damage, range defense bonus seems to be the best. Unfortunately, this armor that's high in range defense bonus weighs a lot, but 
I've sorted out the run situation. We won't need staminas anymore, it seems, and we don't have to waste as much food and supplies. Just a little perk of not having to waste my staminas and lobsters here. But I'm still likely going to have to spend around 30 hours here to get the dragon pickaxe, as well as the collection log slots on drop rate. All right, we're now over 70 mining, and we're able to finally purchase the large watering can. I've opened about 10 ore packs, and have not gotten lucky with those as well for the dragon pickup. Another 40,000 points later and about three hours, we now have the fertilized soil spell that I can never use, but it unlocks a collection log slot, so I'll take it. Once again, we've opened a couple more ore packs, and the normal drops from these ore packs, by the way, are terrible. I've been here for over 20 hours running in armor, trying to get this dragon pickaxe. This place is terrible, but we're now at 81 mining. We've opened over 65 ore packs still no luck oh my god i actually just got this i was about to log off for the night and the last ore pack i opened i pulled the broken pickaxe this is 77 ore packs that i've had to go through about 22 hours of volcanic mining using the quick method for points of running around and getting in and out as quick as possible solo and geez i am surprised i think this is the first time i've actually gotten something on this account under the drop rate which is one in 100 here but now i have to pay this guy 2.5 mil which luckily i do have from a lot of implings tob kc loot etc i sold for high alk value to the rogue shop and we're gonna spend that because i really want this dragon pickaxe badly there he is i'm gonna go now complete at least the mother load mine for the upper floor and probably after that since the upper floor is a little bit more afk get the remainder of the golden nuggets for the prospector outfit i did end up getting a helmet there earlier because i was bored of this i had to take a break from it and we do have two more pieces of prospector but before we get those i think i'm really going to focus on getting to the upper floor so i can properly afk those last few nuggets all right we can finally leave the lower floor i have been using this weird addy pickaxe method that's a four tick cycle to increase my pay dirt on the lower floor unfortunately it only works on the lower floor but this is good now we can use our new dragon pickaxe on the upper floor all right after several more hours we've managed to get the prospector legs and all we need left is the top we're also now 82 mining actually almost 83 mining we've been here a long time motherload mine is not as afk as i thought either unfortunately and that's why eventually we'll be going to star mining okay here we go prospector top we're almost 83 mining still not quite there but we have full prospector and we have access to the upper floor I'm going to take a break from Motherload Mine for now. I will come back here to get the bags, the gym bag and the coal bag, as I'll need them both for skilling in the future. You know how I found a way to not waste stamina earlier? Well, I realized this could come in handy for many other activities. I've already got 99 Hunter at Herbivore, and I found about 2,500 Herbivores doing this, but I never got the pet, and I never got 100 Hunter, which I want to get 100 in the stats virtually because I'm that much of a nerd, and I just want to do it. As well, I never got the final large fossil I needed for the museum, which is going to be another lamp for a few thousand Slayer XP. So I'm going to use my new run mechanic in order to get some more Herbivore KC, hopefully get the pet, maybe get the fossil and for sure get the 100 virtual level. All right, so a few hundred herbivore finds into this. We have gotten a large fossil. Let's see what it yields. I need a specific piece. Well, that's definitely not it. I needed the spine and I got a plant from a large fossil. I didn't even remember that was possible. Another day, another large fossil, but unfortunately not the piece I needed. After about 12 hours of doing this, I've finally gotten level 100 virtually in Hunter, something I've always kind of wanted to do. But unfortunately, we haven't got the large fossil I needed, and we have not gotten the herbivore pet yet. I'm going to go for a few more herbivores just to get to exactly half of drop rate, and that's going to be 3250 because an herbivore pet is 1 in 6500 finds. Okay, that's 3250. No luck, no fossil, no pet. We're going to move on and do something else, and that is more combat achievements. But first, we're going to get 96 hit points from Soul Wars from a lot of zeal and time spent AFK. We're also going to get a large stack of gold refunded to us after this recent Zaya update where you don't even need to pay for unlimited minecarts, you just need the quest. Lastly, we're going to get YouTuber privilege and have this lucky imp scouted for us for free and get a black battle axe. Amazing loot right there. For my last magic trick, I wanted to take on a combat task that should be otherwise impossible on an account build like mine, and just to say I've done it. No other reason, there's many other combat tasks I could choose to do for my points, but this one looked like by far the most complex out of any that I could achieve. 
First of all, I kind of developed this method almost three years ago, back whenever I was just first conceptualizing the Defense Peer series before I even made the Defense Peer account. This was because I was going to be going for a visage off the bat, and I originally thought I was going to be doing this through the King Black Dragon, not through Iron Dragons, which I later ended up using. So I developed, before even starting this account, an extremely complex KBD method that could give success at a rapid rate. Years ago, when first using the cow teleport, I noticed that it could trap 1x1 one one and even 2x2 two two NPCs if you stood on their southwest tile. This was because, as it turns out, whenever using the cow animation through the Runefest home teleport, you're actually summoning a 3x3 three three NPC, which starts from the middle of your character. So surrounding your character whenever you're clicking this teleport is virtually a 3x3 three three NPC. This can freeze a 1x1 one one or 2x2 two two NPC, but what about larger NPCs? So what if you could trap a larger NPC but with more cow teleports? And that was the thought. Stand on the corners of a very large NPC's spawn with 4 accounts on each corner to trap the NPC and not allow it to move in any direction. By doing this, you would technically have a wall all the way around your character, as well as a couple of tiles around each side of the larger NPC, in our case, being the KBD. So the hard part was getting the accounts into the position, and then finding people who would be willing to just spam click a home teleport while I did take on KBD kills, for literal hours. But there were some psychopaths out there willing to help, and they simply just got into position after I killed KBD once on my alt account with range in the 8 seconds between each spawn, which yes, is a very short window of time, but after several attempts they managed to get there, and as long as they didn't teleport away and utilize the teleport just as much as possible, they could even lag for a few ticks and it would be fine, then KBD would be stuck in that spawn point for as many times as I wanted to kill it. This means it would be trying to attack the people inside of its body, allowing it to rotate frequently and very infrequently attacking my account that has to actually damage it. The best benefit though of this process is that KBD has an attack range of 10, meaning I could get other accounts outside of its aggro zone. Even say the defense peer after I hit the one damage I needed for the kill count. Now KBD is going to be a much easier NPC for my defense peer to take on versus the chaos elemental because it has a very rapid regen rate being like 30 HP regeneration per minute. So I can actually take a Dragon Warhammer on an alt and hit KBD several times, as well with a secondary alt to spec transfer and speed up this process quite a bit, as long as I brew down my stats on this account. Once I hit the KBD three or four times with the Warhammer, I then decide its defense is lowered quite enough, as each hit is a 30% decrease to its total defense level. At this point, I switch the alt into a Serpentine Helm and a Toxic Staff to get a 100% chance at Venoming the NPC, after I've checked on my defense account with my low stats that he's regen back up to full since the D Warhammer. I'll sip some magic potions at times, or just leave my magic a little bit decreased, and sit in some at least decent magic gear. KBD's magic defense is a little bit, but it's not insane. So as long as I'm able to get a singular airstrike off for a 1 or a 2 damage, KBD will always regen back to full HP before the Venom starts ticking down, allowing for a possible Iron Man KC, and KBD is not immune to Venom, so this works perfectly. Although his health regen is super fast and makes the Venom take forever to kill him, it still is a viable method. And all I have to do now is hit a 1 before the Venom totally kills the KBD. But Claw Clipper is a different challenge in itself. I need these cow accounts here because they will hold the Venom through alternating aggression. But just like the Chaos Elemental, if the KBD attacks someone here and does some kind of damage, even a zero on anyone other than my Iron Man here, well, the KC won't count towards my Iron Man and I can't get the combat task. Luckily, because these accounts are technically in KBD's body, he keeps aggression, therefore keeps his venom, but he's never able to attack any of them, and therefore never nullifies the Iron Man's KC. And also never nullifies venom damage because it's constantly being attempted to be transferred to accounts that are stuck inside of its body. So finally, after hitting the one, I then go ahead and run out of its range, teleport to LMS. By the way, I have to be doing this in the singular LMS world for this to work. Then I'll be going inside of LMS, timing it around the same time that the venom ticks down on KBD. KBD to kill him and put a protect for melee prayer on my overhead as the KBD dies. Therefore, I will get the kill credit on my Iron Man and technically have all the real damage on it as Venom is neutral damage, and this will award my account the KC while in LMS, which will also award my account the Claw Clipper combat task. Because, even though I'm one prayer in the main game, in LMS you can use protection prayers and my protect melee will be up. Now, KBD wasn't that bad to kill because I could de-warhammer it several times, I didn't need to attack Pierce the Venomant, I could use magic because even hitting it too, his regen was so quick he would always go back up to full HP before the Venom ticked down. Therefore, it made the kills between only 5 and 10 minutes on average, unless I just got super unlucky with de-warhammer special attacks, which sometimes did happen. 
Even though KBD originally has the same stats as Chaos Ellie, because of its HP regeneration and its non-immune to Venom effect, it allows me to kill this much quicker, and therefore I could even take down the 10 KC combat task, as well as the 25 KC combat task. This account luckily also has very high herb lore being 90, so I'm able to make anti-fire potions and take down the easy combat task of just sipping an anti-fire and wielding my dragon fire shield while killing the KBD, uh, and that's all that's literally required of this one task. Another task I tried to overcome while getting the 25 kill count, which did take a while, about 6 hours in total, was hide penetration, and that is by killing the King Black Dragon with a stab weapon. Although I did technically hit the 1 or more damage with a stab weapon being the Swift Blade, this didn't count. So then I tried using other stab weapons such as a barbed tailed harpoon and even a bone spear. This still did not count towards the combat task, so I assumed it was the venom damage doing the last hit that complicated this. So I tried to time my attacks to hit a zero at the last stick of venom and maybe it would recognize my stab weapon hitting the last physical hit even though it was a zero, kind of like you can do with alt slayer. But no, unfortunately this did not trigger the combat task either. So what I would have to do is time my attacks and just hope that I would somehow hit a 1 or a 2 with my super pots at the same time KBD's Venom ticked down and killed him. The exact same tick, in fact. But that seemed very hard because by the time KBD was brought all the way down to that low HP, his defense also regenerates at a rapid rate, meaning his defense was also very high, and the lower his HP, the harder it was to hit this boss. This was less than a half percent chance of hitting the last hit with the Venom whenever it was all calculated out. And even though I could do KBD around 200 times and just luck out and get this task completed, it seemed likely impossible. But I tried for it anyways in the sole 25 KC I did, even switching to a bone spear being the best one-handed stab weapon to complete this task and timing my attacks to possibly hit a 1 right as KBD died. Now I got very close a few times and hit it maybe one or two times before the actual last tick of Venom, which I was surprised even happened because his defense at that point should be extremely high, but unfortunately I never got the hide penetration task completed. And I did not want my friends to have to sit here for 200 kills or literally about 30 hours in order for that to happen, as we're getting between 5 and 10 kills per hour on a good hour. Oh my god, I got KBD heads. It's like 1 in 120 something. And we're not even 20 kill count. I'll take that though. I'm going to have to tell my friend here to move because I'm running in his body. I'm going to mess up his cow. It's going to have to move. We're going to reset and continue on. If only we could use it somewhere. We can't put it in our house. It gives attack and strength XP when you mount it. And also, we can't get into Mossly Harmless, so we can't get a black mask. We can't make a Slayer Helm. We can't, therefore, attach it to a Slayer Helm. Now, I have been trying to get into Mossly Harmless for a long time now. If anyone has any leads, let me know. I've been trying to go through Puro Puro Crop Circles, do weird timings with that. I've been trying to find stall breaks in the Puro Puro Scry. I've tried everything, honestly. I've spent over 20 hours testing Puro Puro Wheat Field and their mechanics between timing and moving. I've literally tried this for 20 plus hours, mapped it all out to get nowhere so yeah someone help me out with that and eventually one day maybe we can wield a kbd slayer helm and actually use these heads so the cow manip was a success we got a lot of combat tasks done besides hide penetration and even claw clipper which seemed to be impossible because we're one prayer but because of this extraordinary method of utilizing cow teleports inside of the kbd's body on four different accounts as well as lowering its defense venoming it waiting for its hp to regen back and then hitting a one and teleporting to lms we were able to get that task done let's be honest we killed kbd with cows which I'm honestly surprised it all worked out because in theory things sound fine but whenever you actually put them to the test they typically don't play out the way you want. I've done a lot of the hard combat achievement tasks or what I would deem difficult for this account but I needed some time to de-stress and do some easier tasks so I went to Temporos and took on the task there that I had not yet completed which was getting 10 certificates in a singular game by simply following a YouTube guide and doing this first try very easily and then secondly by loading the cannons on both sides and completing the game there where I somehow actually pulled a fishing barrel after just staying at Temporos for a half hour doing these two tasks, which will definitely come in handy for some AFK fishing, speaking of wanting to do more AFK things down the road. And speaking back on fishing, I went to Fishing Chawler to test it out and found out it was terrible, but I eventually do need the Angler outfit to complete the last combat task in Temporos, which is simply finishing a game of Temporos while wearing an Angler outfit. So one day, we'll get that achieved, but for now, I'm staying away from Fishing Chawler, as it is terribly boring. 
So I hope you all enjoyed today's video. We got to do a lot of unique things such as the claw clipper task and other combat tasks which were very hard to overcome on an account build like this. And sooner or later we're going to level up our stats to max, get the justiciar face guard, and finally get the hard tier combat achievements done. We're only 7 points away from completing the hard combat task. There's some easy tasks I can do to get this out of the way but I kind of want to finish my top task before anything else as well as maybe get the angler outfit and complete temporos as well. I love green logging things. Speaking of that eventually we'll go for more collection log items and of course more cool and unique drops maybe even a dragon full helm someday for mithril dragons if we can muster up the strength and courage to take on that for likely a year if you're enjoying this series or the other series or any of my videos please subscribe to the channel once again thank you to my patreon supporters and i hope you all have a wonderful week